Welcome back. This is episode four in my SevTech Ages of the Sky Let's Play. Between episodes, I flew around to a couple of different islands out there. Um, as I did in the last episode, we went to the um, village island over there and we found that there were chickens and sheep. So I went back there, I collected up some fleece from the sheep after making some shears um, with the bone and the twine that I had in the last item in the last episode and then I went to this island here looked for cocoa beans which unfortunately I did not find uh, but did, did collect up a bunch of plant twine off of that island over there and some various other things so now we have some more storage uh, the bees came off of a um, tree that I had on my island here so I've done a fair bit of terraforming and getting everything kind of evened out, cleared off, mostly lit up about 98%, 99% lit up at this point now so we won't be getting too many more mob spawns here. So on this episode we're going to work towards a couple of things. So we will, we want to get the work blade going and I want to work towards a strainer base. Now the strainer base requires the Mark II Whopper. So that's the um, hopper that's made with some bark from the trees. To get this bark, we do need to get that um, stripped off of the logs, which we do with the work blade. So if we just go to oak bark there, just oak wood crafted in your grid, and then you'll get that um, oak bark there. So the other trick, tricksy, seemingly tricksy thing is the cobweb, but it's actually pretty easy. It's just string intensive, which is the main reason I went over to the village island and collected up some of this fleece here. So with the fleece and my shears, which I hid them on myself here. You just put these in your crafting grid and you'll get four string per fleece. So that's going to give us a good start on uh, string because we're going to need quite a bit of it in the next uh, couple of episodes here getting working towards leather and getting some of the horsepower machines set up. So that's what I'm looking forward to the future. So in preparation for that I grabbed all that string. So got a good amount of it here now. Uh, the rest of it is pretty straightforward, so I am just going to um, also show you that for the flint work blade we need some more of this flaked flint. I started digging down here um, to see if I had any um, gravel underneath my base and I found a little bit there. Also while flattening off the top of this hill that I'm under, I did find about three flint, but that's not quite enough to make um, the work blades so I'm going to show you normally at the beginning of the game you would make the um, sieving net what is it called I forget what it's called but we're gonna make it here so normally you would have exposed gravel somewhere on your island and then you would just make off the fiber mesh here and if you just put gravel in your crafting grid with that then that will give you the flint that you need so now that we've got the flint, we just got to go over to the wall. We'll flake it off here. And then we'll get the work blade made up. So one, two, three, four, piece of string. What did I do with the fourth one? I think maybe I broke a flint without getting a flake off of it, or maybe I didn't pick it up. Strange. Put all this stuff down. Oh, what am I missing here? Oh, it's plant twine, not string. There we 
we go. We've got our work blade now. I'll just grab up some of this wood. And we get stripped logs on top of that. Now, at this part of the game, I'm going to um, use this stripped oak logs to get my wood. And then I'll make up some of the other things that we need to get working towards uh, the strainer. And then um, on each of these nets, they do produce different things. So if you just hit U on there, we can see this one will give us different kinds of planks, which it just depends on which chunk you're in, which type of plank you're, you will get. So sometimes you'll get acacia, sometimes you'll get dark oak, and you always have a chance to get the sticks, clay, and stone there. Uh, the survivalist strainer is the one that we need to complete the advancement and it gives us the shark teeth which we'll need a little bit later on in the progression as well as ink sacks which I'm going to need to make the brown dye because I didn't find any cocoa beans over on the jungle island. Now the fisherman's strainer will be handy for getting a little bit of food but as well as more lily pads which we'll probably need um, to make more boulder kites as the game progresses. So all three of these strainers do have some uses and they are somewhat string intensive. So each net of that requires three. Um, same with the dense net, it requires three each, but you need six to make a craft and then you get two out of the craft and then this one again, three more here, um, just surrounded by sugar canes. So we'll be right back after I've done the preliminary crafting and we'll get everything set up. All right, so just before we get started on crafting up that strainer, a note on the immersive chests here. So there is a reason why I don't use these guys and that's because they only hold three rows of items and that's a total of 12 slots in the immersive chest there whereas the shelves give you 16 and they're also a little bit more handy because you can put them up on your wall and they don't take up all of the floor space. I guess the counter argument as the these can get upgraded to the um, next level of chests but that all gets pretty wood intensive and it's definitely not worth it since we get access to regular chests once we get to age one anyways. So I'm a big fan of using the shelves and not the regular chests. So here we are, we need to make the uh, first hopper, which is just the chest there with five pieces of wood. And that'll give us an advancement. Now the next one. We'll need the hopper, the five bark, and the cobweb. And now for the strainer itself. The strainer goes into the chest, and then four pieces of wood, and a couple of sticks. Gives us our strainer. And then we just need to make the mesh, and I'm going to make the actual uh, dense mesh or the, the dense mesh yeah, here first, um, just because I do want to get the ink sacks so that I can get on to getting the dye powder so that I can get that brown dye that I need and the ink sack that I need to get the bladder because we do want to work our way towards leather for getting into the horsepower machines, the chopping block, the grindstone, and the press. So I will be back to put this all down and we'll go over some mechanics on that. All right, so here we are. We've got our strainer base and the mesh. So the strainer needs to be too deep in the water because the mesh needs to be sitting in the water. Now there are some um, 
mechanics on the efficiency of your strainer and that is for each block of flowing water we get into the strainer you get more efficiency out of it so if I wanted to be a little bit more efficient I would put it back here I'll just break off that Put that down then you can either right click with the strainer in your hand or if you go into the UI for the strainer itself you can also shift click into there so that'll show I'll be getting some dirt some sand some gravel and importantly the ink sacs and the shark teeth which I actually got some because some sharks spawned in here as an earlier time but if you don't not finding any sharks or not confident to fight them then this is the way to get them there and I'm just gonna make sure that we are harvesting up some of that because we will need it to make the fisherman's strainer eventually we're not gonna make that too soon here yet but definitely we will be making it at some point so I do have a big sugarcane farm set up over here so that's that um, while I was digging around and clearing everything out so I got exploded by a couple of creepers not one of those guys but by a proper creeper so we can see there he blew up and left a lingering potion effect so what's the blue one give us weakness so there you go if you want to know I imagine that's on a wiki somewhere but as I was saying, underneath here, I got exploded, blew up to a couple of creepers and exposed. There is a big pool of lava down here, so that's a blessing and a curse in the fact that we will need lots of lava once we get into um, the Tinkers mod and melting down some of the higher temperature items, which will come in age two, but in um, the negative part of it is from lava will spawn these lava monsters which actually shoot fireballs and they're actually the pretty deadly early game mobs so I'm keeping that all covered up for now and making sure that I don't get any of those guys spawning out on my island here I don't think that they have darkness requirements because they spawn beside lava which is always light of course So the last thing that I do want to touch on before we get going or before I end the episode here is I do have some of these various pelts and here's one of here's the shark skin that I got from slaying one of the sharks. So with all of these pelts to get into the leather you just put them in your crafting grid with the work blade and you will start getting this raw hide and then now the rabbit hole into getting to leather begins with this raw hide. So if we just take a look at the uses on this, we need to craft in our crafting grid the raw hide, some salt of any kind, and there's different kinds of salt around. I happen to have this kind here, the just the regular mechanism salt. And you put that in your crafting grid with the fluid filled fluid bladder and that will give us one salted hide then you actually have to put that on a drying rack and then after you put that on the drying rack you'll get the dried hide and with the dried hide you need to combine it with water again with some ground resin to get the wet tanned hide and then this on the drying rack will give you your leather the ground resin comes from uh, bark. So if we just put bark on our grindstone, we will get two ground resin for each bark. And this, this particular bark here is the one that comes from the saw, which we get in late age one. Um, but just on with the regular bark we just made in this episode, we can also get the ground resin there as well. So we've got a great big rabbit hole to get down to get some leather going so that we can make the leads that we need to get into the horsepower mod um, and then get these for our first bits of automated processes going so the chopping block is going to be the first one so we can get our wood a little bit quicker mm -hmm. and don't have to use this manual chopping block all of the time we'll also make the grindstone 
Um, I don't usually automate the grindstone, but we can. And then the other thing that we definitely will be automating will be the press, um, because we need that for getting um, blocks of coal, which we'll see later on. So that's everything for this episode here. We are almost worked our way up to getting that fluid bladder. So as soon as we get some ink sacks, um, I will just combine, I will grind up the ink sack to get the black dye powder. Um, so that's on that machine. I'm sure I can get the black dye powder from ink sacks, grinding up ink sacks. Red and yellow dye powder just come from these red and yellow flowers I got spammed with while I was bone mealing the ground. So once uh, I'll do some other th more things, I'll be flying around the world and trying to gather up a little bit more um, things that we need to improve our quality of life and just get a general lay of the land out there, of what's out there. And also definitely going to be getting some more of that fleece because we're going to get pretty intensive on the string, especially when we get into making all of these leads. So it takes three string for each lead that we want to make. I appreciate all of you watching. Hope you have a good one and we will see you on the next one.